You're tuned in to CPCC Student TV, created by broadcasting and production technology students. Students learning through video games. We'll take you through a day in the life of a simulation and game development student. Plus, get to know Central Piedmont Community College's fourth president. We'll sit down with Dr. Candy Dietemeyer. Hi, I'm Jennifer Roberts, and you're watching CPCC Student TV. Learning doesn't have to be confined to the classroom. The service learning department at Central Piedmont Community College gives students a unique way to get hands-on experience outside of the classroom. CPCC student Virginia Barwick joins us in studio to explain just how that program works. Thanks, Jennifer. Service learning is a win-win for everyone. Not only do students get a deeper understanding of course content, but over 200 agencies across the Charlotte area get the manpower they need to help others. We spent some time at Friendship Trays to see volunteers in action. A sandwich, macaroni salad, and fresh fruit. This small tray of food sends a big message to those who receive it. The mission is to serve those people in our community um, with wholesome, delicious food, those that can't prepare meals by themselves because of frailty or age, and to give them a human contact. Friendship Trays is a local nonprofit that delivers meals to people who can't cook or buy groceries on their own. The organization delivers over 700 meals each day. And to have very dedicated volunteers like the students from CPCC here helping us do that, help us fulfill our mission. This is just one of the organizations that partners with Central Piedmont Community College to give students experience through service learning. Director Jim Martz says the program is designed to help keep students engaged in the community, opening their eyes to the needs of others. It really helps students understand what they're learning in their class and be able to have a tangible skill set to walk away with. Um, for the emotional standpoint, I think we all know what it, how good it feels to give back and help other people. So that kind of speaks for itself. Well, I know there's a lot of people that don't have like food on their plate and I just sometimes when I like go through things, I just think like there's people out there that don't like have food on the table or don't have a place to stay. And I always feel like there's something I can do, but I don't know how to do it. CPCC student Patsy Montesinos is no stranger to hardship. She spent part of her senior year without a place to live. Through like the last two months of my school year, I was homeless and I didn't really have a place to stay or like where to eat. And it just kind of like impacted me because I didn't even think I was going to get the opportunity to come to a college or university. Now, Patsy helps others dealing with some of the same problems that she's faced. I can't go and like save the world on my own. So I guess helping other people who then help the people are like, they're the kind of the gateway for me to do something in the community and make a change. Service learning helps students make a change and makes them more marketable. The hours students spend volunteering are recorded on their transcript for potential employers to see. Show employers and colleges and universities that you've been globally engaged, you understand what's going on in your community, and you've gone into action to give back to the community. Last year, students logged around 100,000 hours of service through service learning. Service learning opportunities are available in a number of courses, from welding to psychology to religion. For a complete list of these courses, visit cpcc.edu. Reporting for CPCC Student TV, I'm Virginia Barwick. Thanks, Virginia. CPCC has opened three food banks across its campuses to help students living in food insecure households. The college partnered with local nonprofit Lowe's and Fishes to provide students with non perishable items, toiletries, and school supplies. It's an emergency food pantry, so it provides two days of food for our students. So if you're hungry, you can't do well in your classes. So we meet those basic needs. Students are required to complete a benefit screening before their second visit. For a list of food pantry locations and hours, visit cpcc.edu. Think back to your first day at Central Piedmont Community College. Were you searching for a parking spot, maybe a restaurant to eat at? We put together some quick tips to help you navigate Central Campus. Stop searching for a parking spot. Leave your car at home. Take the trolley to campus. The City Links Gold Line is free. It runs every 15 minutes during peak times, seven days a week. If you drive to class, make sure you plan ahead. Central Campus has five student parking options. Drive around before the semester starts and get parking near your building. You can find a Central Campus map on the campus website. Forgot your class schedule? Well, there's an app for that. The CPCC app is free. It's available in the App Store or on Google Play. Swipe straight to Blackboard and check your grades. You can also search the college catalog to build your schedule for next semester. 
Time to talk money. Pay your tuition early. If you register for a class but don't pay by a certain date, you'll be dropped from the course. Keep in mind, being waitlisted could work in your favor. Another student's late payment could be your golden ticket into a course. Inside the library, you'll find Copa Coffee. If you don't see it, you'll smell it. The cafe has specialty coffees, decadent pastries, and fresh smoothies to keep that pep in your step. Not in the mood for cafe, Subway, and Taco de Mauro are just a walk away. Take advantage of the library. It offers more than just books. You can rent movies, use computers, and print off assignments. Plus, the library staff will connect students to additional campus resources. Need books? The campus bookstore isn't your only option. You can rent or buy books from Amazon or textbook brokers. Amazon offers free shipping on rentals for students with a Prime account. Another way to keep your energy up? Exercise. The World Rail Gym has free weights, treadmills, and additional cardio machines. Research shows exercise can help you focus in class. She was recently inaugurated as CPCC's fourth president and is the highest serving leader on our campus. Here today for a one-on-one -on -one interview is CPCC president, Dr. Candy Dietermeyer. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Well, Thanks we are so me. excited to have you here. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Well, as students, we want to get to know our president. And what's most important for us is to get a little bit of personal information. So tell us something about you that we won't find on the bio. Well, I'm a big family person. And I love just being at home with my daughter and my husband and my lab and on the back porch drinking a good cup of coffee and just putting my feet up and just being, you know, a mom. I love that. Well, talk a little bit about your personal life. How have things changed for you once you became president at CPCC? Well, it's a bigger city, a bigger job. Um, and having been president somewhere else, the the time constraints haven't changed, but certainly uh, the job and the work and being home a little later because I'm meeting so many new people. Um, it has a bearing on your family life. My daughter often, when I walk in the door, says, where have you been? <laughs> Why are you late again? Um, but she understands it's a great job, and she loves the college, and so does my husband. So it does have a bearing because uh, it's a 24-7 job. Most president CEO jobs are. But we knew when we moved to Charlotte that that was the job, and so um, we're grateful to be here. Now, I know it's hard sometimes for us as students to see what's going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So as president, give us a good idea as far as what goes on behind closed doors. What is your role? Well, my job really is to make sure everybody's focused on students. And so that may seem very uh, simplistic, but I believe everything we do at the college is about students. And so if you're here, you should get up every day thinking, how can I transform lives? Uh, how can I affect a student today in a positive way, uh, affect their student experience? And so I get to see that both broad and wide, right, and, and depth, and try to keep everybody accountable to that uh, on the cabinet and on the team and down to the faculty level. So we stay focused on students. And so that's really what the conversations and the work is about. What has been your most memorable experience so far? Uh, I love students uh, being on, on our campuses, so I couldn't pick one particular moment. Um, I have traveled to every one of our campuses multiple times and try to be very purposed in my time there. It's generally talking to faculty and staff, sure, or the campus dean, but it's meeting students and asking them, how are we doing? meeting their needs, how are their classes going, um, how's their experience, because you can't say you're about students and then not take the time to stop and talk to a student and ask them, because that keeps me grounded. It also keeps my ear to the ground and helps me know what we're doing well and perhaps even where we need to uh, do better. So I would not trade any of those moments with students. That's really, I couldn't pick one. That's really been, those are the great moments. Well, that's good to know. And we, and we care that you care so much about us. So for anyone who wants to be a part of this college, but maybe they're on the fence, they don't mm -hmm. know if they should go to a four-year school or come here to a community college, what would you tell them about coming here to study at CPCC? Well, I would say, base it on a couple things. First of all, come to an institution that's going to care about you and meet you where you are, uh, which I think is with us because our faculty and staff are so genuine and they're great subject matter experts in their field. They care about teaching. That's why they're here. Uh, our facilities, our learning environments are hands down better probably than any university or college or a, as well as matched. And so they're going to have those kinds of learning environments. But I would also say check us out in terms of what we offer in terms of campus life and student life. Those experiences and how you connect outside the classroom, classes are still very small. And yes, we're affordable, but I think it has to be the whole package when somebody makes the decision. So we're a great uh, institution if you want to transfer, but if you want a two-year degree to go right into the four workforce where your your place. But I tell students all the time, make a visit. 
come check us out um, and you won't be disappointed. CPCC President Dr. Candy Dietermeyer, thank you for joining us You're today. Welcome. Thank you for having me. The Pease Gallery serves as a learning lab, bringing art to the everyday student experience. Pease recently represented abstract painter Fuzan Kazakuli in the 1000 Kisses exhibition. Kazakuli's gallery focused on her interpretations of landscape and the earth. Gallery director Megan Lynch says displays like this are more about showcasing the artists. The importance of these galleries are in fact to bring students and bring the faculty, bring the instructors in and also the community so that they can be a part of this and see what's going on here. CPCC galleries continue educating students through the visual arts. Imagine this, a program that doesn't require any books or any testing. Instead, students are encouraged to play video games. CPCC student reporter Giselle Romero explains. Thanks, Jennifer. It almost sounds too good to be true. But this program is real, and it's offered right here at Central Piedmont Community College. The simulation and game development program offers an authentic learning experience. Students are merged in hands-on training that blends creative writing and computer skills. Check it out. It all starts off with an idea, a concept that eventually leads to a game. Farha Javidi is a program chair and an instructor for the simulation and game development program at Central Piedmont Community College. First, we want to make sure everybody learns at least a little bit of every skill. So they have to learn 3D modeling, they have to learn um, uh, programming, game design, writing, audio, video for games. He spent several years fine-tuning the program, which currently offers 42 courses. It has been 12 years now that we have been in, uh, you know, working on this program, and we are leading the whole nation. Students like Evie Coldstrand, who is studying to become a programmer or game designer. I've always been interested in video games and developing video games. Coldstrand is also a part of Girls in Games, a student organization created to help promote a female presence in technology. They play video games, they discuss, they, they have a really good social environment in our area that students feel comfortable. Well, everyone here is so welcoming and they go out of their way to help you. And I think that's the first thing I noticed. Uh, they want to help you every way they can to make sure that you realize your dreams. Offering students a safe place to put their critical thinking and creativity skills to the test. Simulation and game development students also gain real world experience through work-based learning. The program gives students the opportunity to work with local companies to design, develop, and publish their own games. Reporting for CPCC Student TV, I'm Giselle Romero. You may recognize him from the CPCC dance concert. He's also appeared with the Carolina Kalush and Company. Meet Byron McDaniel, a professional dancer studying here at CPCC. Welcome to the show, Byron. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we want to introduce you to all of our viewers. So first, talk to us about why you became a professional dancer. Well, when I was younger, I saw my mother dancing in our what I call the great room. She was a ballet dancer. And I remember watching Mikhail Baryshnikov on TV and said, I wanted to do that. I actually pointed to the TV and said, I wanted to do that. So it wasn't long before that she started teaching me the basics, which is like plies and tendus and everything. And then I think around the age of 10, I enrolled into a conservatory on scholarship um, in Columbia, South Carolina. And from there, I just kind of really grew up in that conservatory. And um, at the age of 16, I moved to another city where I enrolled into a conservatory. Then I went to the governor's school in Greenville for a classical ballet on full scholarship. Um, at the age of 19, I actually moved uh, here to Charlotte to dance professionally. Which is what we're most excited about. And I know at one point in this time, you had to stop dancing. So talk to us, us about what happened there. So I, I did have to stop dancing. Um, I danced pretty much all my 20s in Europe. And I noticed myself getting really fatigued after a show, which is quite unlike me. So I went to the doctor and they did a series of tests and they said to me they had to fly me directly home because my kidney was failing, which um, was quite a shock to me because I'm, I'm pretty healthy. But um, so I was flown home and put on peritoneal dialysis immediately. 
um, and took three years off to go through that whole process, and I ended up having a kidney transplant. So um, going through something like that, I'm sure you can imagine that people uh, may be in denial or sometimes give up on life. Uh, that's not me at all. I, I tend to go into things head first, you know, and try to diffuse the situation, realizing what my new truth is. And that was my new truth. I was on dialysis. I was on a waiting list for a kidney. I wasn't dancing. Um, of course, I had the option of giving up, uh, but I didn't. You know, I was very positive about everything. And uh Instructions, of course, from the doctor was, you know, not to dance, but, you know, who listens to doctors, right? So um, <laughs> I did what I could, you know, just to stay in shape, you know, just, I guess, to feed that hunger for dance. Because, you know, when you're used to doing something since you can't remember and then feeling like you have to give it up, uh, sometimes you feel like you're at the height of your game and then the next day you're not. Um I did that. I would sneak to ballet schools and just train and do what I could, you know, and which ended up working in my favor. I was only on the transplant list for a year. Uh, the doctor said that the kidney they had chosen for me was perfect because of how in shape my body was. Well, we're so excited to see you here, and we're also excited to see you in future productions here in Charlotte. Thank you so much for joining us. Byron McDaniel, CPCC. CPCC offers a variety of cutting edge courses to help you learn how to get out of your comfort zone. Rev your semester up with the motorcycle course. The college offers classes for beginners and the more experienced rider, along with basic safety courses. Tuition is about $230. Motorcycles are not included in that cost. Conquer your fear of heights with a rock climbing course. Learn how to use a harness and rappel down a mountain. Your semester will peak with a trip to Crowder's Mountain to put your skills to the test. Courses take place during the spring semester. When you come back in the fall, keep yourself grounded with a course in relaxation. Techniques for relaxation and stress relief offer a safe place for health and happiness. Yes, you can earn credit hours for relaxing. To explore more cutting edge courses, visit the course catalog on cpcc.edu. Thank you for joining CPCC Student TV. I'm Jennifer Roberts. Have a great day. You're tuned in to CPCC Student TV, created by broadcasting and production technology students.